Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee with Ye. Yeah. I am Megan Sungu from Albania. Today's topic will mainly focus on climate change and other environmental issues, what went on during the COP26, and also the huge impact that youth action has on making our world a better place. I am gladly to introduce you to Azechai, environmental activist and representative of Albania at pre-COP26 in Milan. Hello and welcome. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me and congratulations on your initiative. Thank you so much. You have an impressive uh, professional background and a great record of civic engagement. What triggered your interest in environmental matters? Uh, thank you very much for your question. Actually, I was very active uh, in civil society organization till I was uh, a young girl. And uh, lately um, I got in contact with some youth and environmental NGOs and I started to volunteer with them. And then I learned more on uh, the problems that the world was facing. I started traveling a lot and meeting other youngsters, peers from the region and from the Europe as well. And I started to get inspired by them, actually. I think that one of the most important things is to share uh, knowledge and experiences with other young youngsters across the region, in Albania, across Europe as well. And this is what actually triggered me to start then um, getting active because um, while meeting them I noticed that the youngsters here in Romania back four or five years ago were not uh, uh, they weren't yet um, aware on um, the importance of uh, getting active on environmental issues so uh, this is how it started and this is how I wanted to um, start collaborating with them or starting uh, um, environmental movement together with other youngsters here in Albania, sharing knowledges, uh, getting active, um, organizing events and different activities related to youth and environmental issues in Tirana and in other cities as well. Thank you. Um, a lot of your work previously has consisted in recruiting, supervising, and coordinating youth. And from your personal experience, is Albanian youth and youth from the Western Balkans in general uh, motivated to make a concrete change regarding the current environmental issues that our world is facing? Uh, thank you for the question. Actually, as I stated before, um, what uh, one of the most important um, things that made me um, become more active on environmental issues was exactly the inspiration that I got from uh, the peers, from other youngsters. Uh, from the region and from Europe as well. Uh, so uh, yes, I think that it is very important to um, share this knowledge, to get together, to share experience, to share even problems as we usually do actually, uh, from, for example, the Western Balkan countries, even share environmental problems like air pollution, water pollution, um, uh, the protection of um, common species and habitats. So since we're very uh, strongly connected, uh, even by the, that side, I think that um, coming together is a very important and crucial um, element uh, for, for the region. Of course. Um, as I mentioned before, when I was introducing you, you represented Albania and the pre-COP, which was held in Milan um, mm -hmm. last month. And it is considered to be the final formal multilateral opportunity for ministers and other um, and other people, other activists mainly, to shape the negotiations in detail ahead of the meeting, which was held in Glasgow. 400 youth participants compiled, presented, and drafted essential recommendations in a document. And would you please list some of these key messages that were delivered by youngsters during this very important event? Yes, actually, I had the honor to, uh, to, to represent uh, the Albanian youngsters at the pre-COP26 event in Milano. 
Um, firstly, I would like to say that I would really um, like uh, that there were more youngsters from Albania. So it's, uh, to me, it's a pity that um, other uh, people could not come there because I would like to have a stronger voice uh, there. Um, actually, it was um, an, an amazing event. It was extremely big to me. This was the most important and biggest event that I've ever participated. Um, and actually, it was a thought-provoking and very uh, emotional um, experience for me. Um, because for the youngsters, um, came at the stage and they were speaking about their friends who got murdered, for example, because of uh, they were trying to protect um, the environment, which for, for these kind of, um, for their, their peers and their friends. And actually, even here in Albania, we have um, many uh, civil society actors and activists who are out there and we don't know about them, who are protecting uh, our habitats, who are protecting forests, who are protecting species, but they are in danger because of um, many risks that they face out there. And some of them ha have even lost their uh, lives and we do, do not know about these kind of things. So to me, uh, listening to them, but sharing also with them um, this kind of experience was very, very emotional. Um, yes, as you said, we were 400 youngsters and we had the chance to um, work together in four uh, main topics. Um, youth driving ambition. ambition was the first topic um, and we um, shared three key messages regarding this topic and what we requested is from the ministers to have um, three main uh, points uh, uh, in their minds like um, firstly, youth participation in decision-making process, of course, then uh, to consider youth funds and um, another um, very important point is the meaningful uh, representation of, uh, of youth and inclusiveness of them in this kind of uh, very important events. Another important topic that we worked on was on sustainable recovery. And we talk, uh, when we talk about sustainable recovery, we talk about nature-based solutions as well to be considered um, while implementing, for example, their green agendas. Um, another topic was also um, the involvement of uh, other non-state actors. And when we talk about non-state actors, we talk about even businesses, even media, even other important institutions who should also have a role uh, together in implementing the 2030 Agenda. And the last but not the least important one was the climate consciousness of the public, of the citizens, which we also worked on and we gave uh, recommendations on the topic. Um, of course, it, uh, there were three days um, and we were divided in smaller groups and each of us had their say um, in that and the document was clearly elaborated. So after we worked on the document, we had um, more concrete document a shorter version that of course was distributed together with the elaborated version to all uh, the ministers that participated at uh, COP26 and what we uh, noticed and what we did after the COP event was that we saw their outcomes after the event and what they promised and actually um, some of our recommendations were reflected uh, even in, in their promises and this, their speeches. Thank you so much. And honestly, I want to personally thank you uh, because sometimes people, they are very close-minded and like we do not think on problems, for example, on a, a bigger level, on a bigger scale, because we do not think that maybe there are people that have the same age as us and they just live in a less fortunate environment, let's say. So I think it's better to have this insight and to really value what we have and also to work towards making this, this world a better place for everyone. Thank you. 
Um, COP26 is the first major test of the 2015 Paris Agreement. To which extent have the goals of the Paris Agreement been successfully met up to um, 2021? This gathering actually had some, some small successes. Actually, we, we can mention, for example, uh, that the main um, a topic that was uh, that they were focused on was the forestry issue and then energy and then green um, entrepreneurship and um, uh, similar things but um, again uh, there were still uh, some some uh, things missing and uh, this is why they agreed to meet again um, next year but um, from the youth perspective actually because it's very difficult to to remain um, neutral when we talk about uh, this as long as we are youngsters and um, I would prefer, I would love to be at COP26 and I would of course be outside the building with Greta and the others. Um, so of course um, these kind of meetings they are meetings where people uh, mostly talk, discuss, uh, they say usually big promises. We know, um, we as youngsters and uh, we as experienced youngsters now with climate change topics, that there are still many things uh, and many interests involved and there are still many things to be done. So I would not prefer to call COP26 as a successful meeting, gathering, because there is still so much to be done. Of course. Um, climate change and environmental degradation are an existential threat to Europe and to the world. And to overcome these challenges, the European Green Deal will transform the EU into a modern, resource efficient, and competitive economy. Aiming at these significant success look like at COP26. It's very positive the fact that Europe is leading the climate um, um, movement towards um, a greener planet, let's say. Um, so, of course, um, this is something that should be appreciated and it's appreciated. Um, they are working a lot on the, the, their laws and, of course, being as, uh, aspiring to become part of the EU um, family. And we are every day watching how difficult it is for us to for example, transpose the EU laws for the environment and then to implement because they are many and they are very um, elaborated. Um, so this is something very positive and I really uh, like the fact that uh, the EU Green Deal and um, it's still being worked on to, um, to elaborate all the topics that, uh, that this um, deal uh, contains. So um, what was noticed also at the COP26 is that even the member states, they were uh, actually referring to the EU Green Deal and they were as a good base for um, the promises of the member states. And hopefully a lot of other countries follow the uh, example that uh, EU has already set. Um, further on, I would like to discuss about the Green Agenda for the Western Balkans, which was uh, adopted uh, in November 2020, uh, the summit in Sofia. Mm -hmm. uh, given that the Western Balkans are an important and integral part of Europe, the European Commission has suggested that a large majority of the support and of the fund would be directed toward uh, key activities and uh, sustainable infrastructure and key uh, investments in the uh, region of the Western Balkans. Our country, Albania, is taking uh, action to provide a, vet, a better and healthier environment for its citizens. Uh, has there been significant progress in the last years on a national level and also on a regional level? Actually, yeah, it's very important that the Western Balkans should be included in this kind of policies, especially climate change, because the Western Balkans itself 
uh, they are highly impacted by the consequences of climate change. We can mention here um, Bosnia, for example, who is suffering climate migration um, and the side effects of uh, differences of, of climate um, year to year. And then, of course, countries like uh, Montenegro and Albania who are uh, facing the sea level rising, but of course, the, the high temperatures that are being also noticed even in um, um, North Macedonia, Serbia as well. So there are many, uh, many, many consequences uh, that we are facing. And at the same time, we as Western Balkans are countries that are uh, that we do have our footprint um, into the CO2 emissions. Uh, this is why I find the uh, Western ba the, the Balkans green agenda a very important one, uh, firstly. And uh, secondly, um, when we speak uh, on the um, low level, um, we can say that yes, Slovenia has made some progresses uh, regarding climate change. This has been done with the support of European Union member countries like Germany, for example, uh, with the support of UNDP as well. So in the um, paper level, there, there have been progresses because in December 2019, we even um, had um, finally passed the law for climate change. So we now have a law for climate change. We also have a strategy on climate change. And of course, lately, we can see how um, um, members of the government or deputies are talking more about the issue. And But when it comes to practical, um, then we can tell that, uh, firstly, the environment itself is a topic that um, has only recently become important for a country. It has not been a priority at all. And we can see this even uh, one of the, the, the elements how we can tell about this is when you see the budget of, uh, of your state and then you see that the Ministry of Environment is the, um, is the last on the list. Climate change, you can see very less money uh, that have been spent um, which are maybe seven times less than the one that has been uh, previously promised to be spent, let's say. Um, so yet we are not um, fully aware and we are not working um, on climate change topics. Sometimes we can say that there are some people that can say that of course Albania is a poor country, we have to focus more on our economy, we have to start thinking that climate change is actually an emergency. We have uh, the example of many other countries that are facing these kind of uh, uh, consequences, very big consequences, even for their citizens, even for their houses, even for the, their species. Um, and in the same time, only this summer, we faced a severe um, fires uh, where we lost uh, our forests, many of our forests inside uh, the protected areas. And what we also noticed is that our country is still not yet prepared for that. Uh, we noticed that we did not have enough materials to um, face uh, this kind of emergency. We did not have enough human resources uh, and we got the support of European Union to elaborate and to think and to, to recognize the consequences of climate change. Only uh, by that way we can then uh, really prepare and be ready to face the consequences which unfortunately are here and are going only to get worse. Go back to youth. Uh, what do you think about youth networks in the region and their involvement? Uh, could youth do more and possibly what? Um, actually, I'm very positive and optimist about the, the youth regions. Um, they are working together, and this is first uh, a very good and positive thing. And um, of course, since uh, this is a um, recently new thing, maybe five, six years, now, um, this needs time. So uh, this is why um, 
what I've noticed is that the topics have been um, treated, let's say, step by step. Now there are, there are the issues like reconciliation, dealing with the past, uh, uh, peace building um, and friendship um, within the countries based uh, lately. But of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, what um, actually connects us uh, as Western Balkans um, is the environment. And there are still many things that youngsters of Western Balkans can do together. I've seen some very nice projects, some very, uh, some very nice initiatives that are being done cross-border, in cross-border border areas. And this is very good, but still it can be done a lot. As I mentioned, um, there are areas, for example, uh, green belts, um, flyways of birds, and other very interesting um, uh, habitat and species. Uh, so we should uh, come more often together dealing with the protection of uh, nature protection, for example, species protection, and of course with common projects regarding um, recycling, waste management, um, why not um, climate change, <laughs> since we're talking about this, and um, start starting a new new business green green business ideas together. So yes, I am very positive about the youth networks within the region. Um, I really like their their projects and initiatives. I would suggest more initiatives on environment topics should be taken in the future. Thank you so much for this conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and looking forward to meeting you in the future. Thank you very much. And I wish you really lots of success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.